Now let's talk about the energy transfer in axial flow turbine. Now this is the enthalpy entropy chart for an axial flow turbine. So we'll first of all uh, understand the uh, demarcations on the uh, plot. So the inlet to the stator blade, all those states are given as one. Okay. So this, this, they are the inlet to the stator blades. All right. Then the inlet to the rotor blades, inlet to the rotor blades, they are designated as 2. The exit from the rotor blades from the rotor blades, they are designated as 3. All right. And then the stagnation conditions, the stagnation conditions are 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3. The stagnation conditions 0, 1, 0, 2 and 0, 3. Then we will talk about the isentropic conditions. Okay, they are 2 dash, then 3 dash, 3 dash is this, okay, then you have 0, 3 dash, this particular point, okay, then we have 3 double dash, this point, okay, and then we have 0, 3 double dash. Okay, 0, 3 double dash is not demarcated over here. Okay, so we'll, we'll mark that while we uh, go ahead in the analysis. So these are your isentropic conditions. Right, now let's start with the stator blades. Okay, so in the stator blades, there is no change in the enthalpy. You can see in going from 1, uh, 0, 1 to 0, 2, the enthalpy is same. That is H01 is equal to H02. Although there is some pressure drop from P01 to P02, but there is no enthalpy change. This means that there is no work done in the nozzle ring. So this is nothing but the nozzle ring. All right, so I'll write down that in stator blade, or it is also called the nozzle ring, Okay. Due to no work done, due to no work done by the nozzle, by the nozzle, okay, H01 is equal to H02. Although there is a drop in the pressure from P01 to P02. All right. Now, after the stator blades, there is further expansion, and the steam goes from the stator blade into the rotor blades, and the expansion goes from P02 to P03. But you can see over here that there is an enthalpy drop from H02 to H03. So there will be some work done in this case. All right. So we'll write down that in rotor blades further expansion occurs further expansion occurs okay from p02 to p03 so the work done per unit mass work done per unit mass this will become H02 minus H03. Now H02 is equal to H01. I can also put it as H01 minus H03. Okay. So 
let us say the total work is capital W. So capital W is equal to the mass flow rate or the mass into H02 minus H03. Now H is equal to CPT. So this can be put as M into CP into T02 minus T03. So this is the total work done in going from P02 to P03 in the rotor blades. Now if you talk about the ideal conditions in nozzle, in ideal condition the pressure drop is from P01 to P2 dash. Okay, so this line is of P2. So this much is the pressure drop in ideal conditions. Alright, so I can say that ideally in nozzle Okay. Either the pressure or the temperature drops from drops from T01 to T2 dash. Okay, but due to friction, the exit temperature increases to 2. So from T2 dash to 2, this is the increase in the temperature due to friction. So actually this is the temperature of exit from the nozzle. Ideally it should be this. So there is little bit of you know heat addition due to friction. So actually actually due to friction due to friction exit temperature from nozzle is T2 which is slightly greater than T2 dash. Okay, so this means that there is a certain amount of enthalpy loss. Okay, this was higher enthalpy loss and this is slightly less enthalpy loss. So there is some loss in the nozzle that is there due to friction. So the coefficient of the friction or the coefficient of nozzle loss in terms of pressure would be, so coefficient of nozzle loss in terms of pressure is P01 minus P02 divided by P02 minus P2. So this is the coefficient of nozzle loss. Now this was in the stator blades. Now we go to the moving blades or the rotor blades. So further if you go ideally your further expansion would take place from 2 dash to 3 double dash. Okay, this is in the moving blades. But due to you know friction, 2 dash moved up to 2. So what is happening? Your ideal expansion is taking from 2 to 3 dash. But due to friction again in the moving blades, this 3 dash moves up to 3. Okay, so ideally it goes from 2 dash to 3 double dash, but what was happening in the actual scenario in the nozzle, 2 dash moved to 2, so what should happen, 2 to 3 dash should happen, but in actually there is friction in the moving blades also, so 3 dash moved to 3. Alright, so this is something that we should note down, so T3 is the exit from the moving blades. Alright, so now you can see that in going from the stator blades to rotor blades there is a certain amount of loss. Alright, so these losses in blades they are due to four reasons. Okay, so the first reason for the losses in blades are the profile losses. So profile of the blade. So there is a certain boundary layer that is created and the separation of that boundary layer results in the loss of the uh, you can say energy flowing over the blades. Second kind of or the second reason for this loss in the blades or turbine is the annulus loss. The third kind of loss or the third reason for the loss are the secondary losses. 
And the fourth kind of, or the fourth reason for the losses in the blades is the tip clearance loss. Tip clearance loss. So these four make sure that there is some energy loss when the steam enters the rotor blades and exits the this is the entrance to the stator blades and this is the exit from the rotor blades so there is a loss that happens in the in this journey from stator to rotor all right so these are the four you know you can say reasons due to which there is an energy loss in an axial flow turbine so note down this diagram note down these workings and these reasons for the energy loss while uh, the turbine flows in an axial flow turbine so i hope you understood this now in the next video we look at the velocity diagrams of axial flow turbines